So um, thank you all for, for coming to the uh, next presentation and uh, our lovely ladies here, uh, Robin McRae and Janice Carter will be talking to you about their experiences and, and the third they lady. brought a friend. Yes, <laughs> yes yeah, right, the third lady. I'm the third lady. Lady is my last name, actually. We're kind of going to start this out a little bit different, okay? Most of you already know Janice's background, not a lot, no mine. Both of us have been around these wonderful, incredible people um, since we were toddlers. Okay, so we spent a lifetime with them. During the course of that lifetime, it is our opinion that these are people. Okay, these are ancient people. They are not an animal. They are not running around the woods like a bear. They are an actual people. Is that better? Thank you. We believe that because they have a language. They have an alphabet. They can talk. They have a culture, they have laws, they have families, they have community groups. Party okay. mode. Oh yeah, and they write. I mean, if they can do Party all mode. of these things, in Janus's right. famous terms, if it walks like a duck and it looks like a duck, it's a duck. Um, this has also been backed up by Dr. Melba Kutchin's study, of which I was part of, so was Janice. And we can get into that later if there's any questions on that. But they are a human hybrid. The mitochondrial side, which is the mother, is a human. On the father's side, as far as the scientific paper goes, it is unlisted in any DNA bank what the dad is. So they are a human hybrid, which is why you have the language. This is why you have the ability that they have to act and have their lives as a human. But let's make no mistake, they are a different type of human. Their ways are not our ways. They're never going to be our ways. Their culture is different. Okay? So it's not going to be the same type of lifestyle but that doesn't make them any less of a human. If you go to another country, you're going to find that their lifestyle is different as well. So they are, in our opinion, human. To help bring that more across to everybody, we've been very blessed. Janice has brought some vocals, as has James. And so we're going to play those for you now, because James also would like to go to the other side over there. Yeah. So we're going to do some vocals for you the first. To the dark side. We're going to allow it. <laughs> okay, let's do James first, okay, so that way... Yeah. Here, and you can do that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, my name is James Lady, and I have to say, this is the coolest thing <laughs> in the <laughs> world, sitting up talking about Sasquatch. Uh, I mean, truly amazing. Uh, a few years ago, I, I went out on, uh, I, I was burnt out on my other hobbies. I'm an artist, I'm an angler, uh, do all sorts of things. And here comes Igor. Hello, Igor. Good to see you, brother. So, yeah, this is the coolest thing in the world. I get to rub shoulders and press the flesh with folks like you. We had dinner the other night, and, and, uh, and Bob Daigle, the, the godfather of Michigan Bigfootery. Uh, I got into this uh, because I, by my own wits and reckoning, I discovered that they were, in fact, a real uh, thing, and I just wanted to see one. Since a boy, I thought that they were real, and why couldn't they be? Uh, they were real, I wanted to see one. So I took to the woods, uh, which I was going to anyway, Going up to my favorite valley as a boy, uh, uh, fishing in uh, northern Michigan, it's primordial. It truly is like an Eden, and uh, it is uh, the home of the hairy cousins which we seek, and, and, uh, and, and uh, they can both be uh, menacing and scary, terrifying. They can also be a very peaceful, uh, you know, sort of uh, state. So uh, I'll play a few things for you. Um, 
earlier I had written down a few expressions. One is Otika Pika Hut, and the other is Ffafim, Sfatif. And Ochichichu Ha, I actually heard Ochichichu Ha coming from the river at my last encounter, and it was amazing and terrifying. And uh, and uh, I was just sitting in the woods having a beer. So next time you're doing that, think <laughs> think that uh, you might be next. Uh, and come. Kapika Swa. I'll, I'll play these for you. Uh, I'm not going to play the last last one. Esau Hot. It's on a lesser audio, and it's uh, you can hear it. Okay. And and uh, I maintain a, a YouTube channel called Michigan Aboriginal Project. It used to be named Michigan Sasquatch, but mm -hmm. until I came to the epiphany, that really, that these are indeed a people. Mm -hmm. and they speak. Uh, they speak with you know uh, passion and, uh, and and sometimes peace. I'll just play a few things here uh, for you. Yeah, yeah, please. And the interpretation is. On yeah, it, oh, yeah, let's go with the interpretation. Janice has been around these beings uh, all her life, and uh, she has extensive, uh, uh, me methodic, uh, an extensive methodical approach in, of documenting uh, what she's heard in the past through her interactions. Um, a few of the expressions that I'll play for you, Otika Pika, or Ffafim, Sfatif, Ochichichuha, Kam, Kapikaswa. All of these are multisyllabic, uh, you know, well enunciated morpheme streams. They're just sentences. They're, it's, they're doing what I'm doing now with you all. Uh, so I'll go through this list. Um, I'll start first with the Ffafim, Sfatif. That tells that one through me. This is the one, yeah, this is the one that's uh, sort of alien to um, I think it's down here. Bear with me. Uh, I think it may be up here. Okay, this is the beginning of it. You hear that? That's a melodic, clicking, popping mode, speech modality that they employ. But this is also coupled with conventional speech, which you hear through Jim Sherman's work, uh, uh, through Ron Moorhead's work, it, that, that's conventional speech, and it's loud, it's louder, you can hear it. And I'll play something uh, along those lines that I've captured as well. But here is the FFFM, the Sefetif, following the quick melodic popping. So you hear that? FFFM, the Sefetif. Now the setting of this is a, uh, uh, a teepee that I found in the woods right alongside the road. Most people, I've actually stuck recorders in there and on uh, voice activated button. I hear a grandfather and a grandchild talking and the kid's like, I, I don't know if Bigfoot did this. And it was really, it's really kind of in interesting. These are anomalous structures in the woods that, you know, you might think if you don't know otherwise, you're going to think that, you know, our, you know, our little brothers and sisters made them. Not necessarily so, because I've had great success in finding these structures. You can do it too. Drop a recorder, see what you get. It's labor intensive. It almost killed my uh, uh, my engagement with my wife. I call her my wife now. I'm able to do that. Thank God. Uh, so that was um, FFA and um, I'll try to play the Otika Pika. This is one of the more difficult things to hear. It's in the background, but it's very subtle. And here we go. You hear that, Frank? Here it comes again. Tico, tico. You hear that in the background? Can everybody hear that? Uh, Bob, you're having... I'd like to mention when I'm out in the woods, and my hearing is not quite perfect, but if you... Put your hands up for your ears. Mm -hmm. There's you can do that. about double the volume. Yeah, I'll, I'll play it for you again. Here's right. I'll take We're trying it right here. Mm -hmm. Here it comes. Uh, and here comes come, come, Kapika Swa. Everybody hear that? All right, cup your ears again. Here we go. So you hear that pop, 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 pop. Uh, some of these melodies I have repeated in other area, other vocalizations. So you, it's a calm. I mean, it, it just shows you that 
some of what I've captured that what is repeated and it, it is supportive of a consistent language between these species. So, oh, I'll cheat you hot. Okay, this is, sorry, it's uh, my last encounter and um, it was terrifying. I was sitting having a uh, beer in the woods, which I'd love to do, halfway through my second beer and I was really gonna go to bed after this. I got up to stretch and I hear from the from the river, oh, chee 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 ha! It sounded like Luciano Pavarotti. It was really, <laughs> really crisp, voluminous uh, vocal. And I, it was that that moment that I knew that I was having an encounter. Then I hear some madness. And then I hear a big boom um, and other stuff. And then right after that, you hear Heji Lawa, and it's it's still. Uh, Strikes a nerve, but I'll play this for you. Starting at the four minute 53 second mark of my encounter. And I've, I've published this on Michigan Aboriginal Project. Um, and uh, you can hear it yourself. Just, you know, quiet room helps. Um, you, will hear, you will hear Achichi Chuha, not with the high fidelity that I heard it that night, but you'll hear it in the background. And shortly after that, you'll hear the boom, which I felt, I felt the percussive, the percussive sonic wave, which is boom, I felt that, it was, it was terrible. I really, literally thought that was molested moments on her. But they never molested me, they never harmed me that night. They came in later, uh, Igor, you told me earlier that, you know, a year or two ago, you told me that they are pranksters, right? Oh, yes. They are pranksters. <laughs> and that's what, I believe that's what they were doing to me. So, yeah, they're pranksters. I'm starting to play this at the 452, 451 mark, at 453, a couple seconds, within a couple seconds, you will hear in the distance on Chi Chi Chu Ha. And uh, after that, the other madness that ensues. And I'll, I'll let it play through the Heji La La. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> My theory, and I think it's validated by this uh, encounter audio, that they have an ability to speak within the din of the rain or the wind. And I have other examples of that. If you study my work on the Michigan Aboriginal Project, you'll, you'll find that that holds true. So, um, but that are you wreaking havoc? Later, that same voice you hear, it's saying, havoc, hate this man tomorrow. Now, I, that may be auditory pareidolia, which is a very a real thing, but I don't think it is. These are more, these are sentences, and it, and it still gives me the chills. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's about it. I, I, I don't want to take away from your presentation. No, no go ahead. Oh, oh the translations, yeah, the thank translations, you, Jennifer, for doing this. Translations, because... Then, then we know what it's leading up to. Yeah. Are you wreaking yeah. havoc? And I mentioned yeah. earlier, you know, Janice has documented. But you don't give uh, Robin to say something. Well, no, no, so I will. No, I will. No, wait, wait, wait. We're good. We're perfect. <laughs> okay, We're so good. the author, yeah, Janice was kind enough to take these expressions that I wrote down just off, just off the top of my head, and she put translations to them based on your understanding of their language. And Atika Pika Hut translates, "We eat no bird meat." Just we, we eat, eat no, no bird, bird meat. meat. So they don't eat birds. They may eat other types of meat, but they do not eat meat from a bird. We, you know, maybe it's this particular group. Don't yeah. know. Um, and I, I've been all over Michigan recording these vocals, and they vary 
wildly. So it's not beyond your wildest expectations that their customs and, and dialects and, and their perhaps their culinary preferences uh, might vary as well. Uh, so the, the Chichichuha, what I heard, what I hope some of you heard in the background uh, with the encounter, that says we have an intruder. And that line, that is, that fits the scenario. Um, and the Kapika uh, Swa, uh, why compliment a lesser as in a lesser person? Um, so interesting. It's okay. and it's, it's I, I, I'm sorry, I, was, you know, I just. Are you, with I, the just, I wasn't I'm around with the company. Yes, yes. Yeah, what we're going to do. Is no, time. no, Igor, what has happened is there's while you were resting, there's been a little bit of a change. I'm going to be speaking with Janice. Yeah, I'm leaving right now. Shortly, so. And then tonight, I'm going to be speaking again with Chad, and I'll be talking more about the handprints and that type of things as well. In this case, may I comment a little uh, your word, James? Yes. Uh, yes. You see, uh, when we were in expedition, uh, they were listening that uh, speaking uh, of our uh, Sasquatches or uh, forest people, yes, let's say, and we found some uh, footprints. So it looks like your uh, forest people are more close to the humans than ours. Bigfoot the Sasquatch because uh, and I now say you say you you showed and you demonstrated that their sounds but they are not definite in our case they were speaking and we could understand them just uh, they speaking uh, in Russian language you see that is uh, I think more definite they speak speech we we recorded and we uh, well have they, that is I, it is my command just yeah, my command yeah. that uh, somehow they we have that record which are just uh, showing they speaking and we could understand them just uh, well they have yeah, the capabilities they, yeah it, exactly it is they have the capabilities yeah. to have they have their own language okay they do have their own language but they also have the capabilities to speak in ours. And I think where Igor's coming from is that when he, the ones that he speaks with in Russia speak in Russian. Yes. And they're much, e you know, much easier for him to understand. They speak in that uh, language w w of the country when they live. When yeah. they Do you remember down. being at my home when Janice was staying there and you woke up early and you asked me, were you and Janice outside the window speaking at five o'clock in the morning? Anybody that knows Janice and I, that will never happen at <laughs> 5 o'clock in the morning. No, 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 no. Not in any lifetime. And so I said to Igor, I said, well, of course not. And he said, but you were out there speaking. You both were speaking. But I could not understand you. They were out there speaking in their language. You know, a lot of times if they're going to communicate with us, they do try to give us the courtesy, I think, and I think Janice can back me up on this, of trying to use our language. Amongst each other, as with what James heard, that was more communicating between each other, so it was more in their language, which then gratefully Janice was able to interpret. And I promised earlier the scary stuff. Here's something that's quite terrifying. Uh, after, shortly after I dropped the recorder in an area where the structures were abundant and uh, this seemed to have some activity, I, I recorded this. This was right after I left. I know that because the other recorder, which was within the earshot, uh, did not pick this up. So it wasn't going to go off until about 8 o'clock. So this is. This is, uh, I think, them getting a little pissed off and wondering what the heck I'm doing around in the neighborhood. <laughs> I really wanted to play her vocals, but That's we no, well, I can deal with this. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. You're not off the hook. So oh, she stayed with me for a year and we got into so much trouble. 
Okay, we had the foots were it, my house. Anybody that knows anything about me knows my house is a freak zone on any given day. It's better than Sam Walker Ranch. Yes, and it, it <laughs> never stops and it never slows down and it doesn't matter if I'm by myself or if I have 20 people there. You either have UFOs over the house or Bigfoots and dogmen running around or cat people or ETs or, or whatever. But in, if for anybody that wants to see pictures, if you go where I have Igor's table at, I have a few pictures. But anyway, Janice and I were outside. She was having a cigarette. And we have four clans that are there. And we have a male named Shandoa, a female named Awaka, and a baby named Zerki. And Zerki is just the most precious thing ever, but he plays in my bushes that go up and down the side of the property, destroys most of them, but he has a darn good time doing it. Igor was with me at the time, and he had walked into the bushes where the mother goes and sits all the time. And I said to him, you need to get out of there because she's going to be mad. She's going to be mad. She plays in there with the baby. And he says, no, no, I will be fine. And I said, well, I'll give him a memo on it, but I don't think it's going to fly. So he came out of the bushes. That night, he had gone to bed. Janice and I are standing on the porch. She's having a cigarette, and she was sitting on the step. I have never seen this woman move so fast in my life. She flew off that step and almost threw the door without opening it. And I'm standing there going, what? And they were mind speaking, because both Janice and I are fluent in telepathy. And they had hollered to her, get out. They didn't say anything. I don't know why they didn't say anything to me. but they. I don't know, but she shook the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> she did. And so Janice jumped up and she said, come on. And I said, what is wrong? And she said, they yelled, get out. And I said, nobody told me to get out. And right as I said that, this massive female comes running up the side of my house. She's got like salt and pepper color hair. She goes running by in full physical form dives into the bushes and shook the living tar out of the bushes. Janice is beep piling it into the house. And I'm standing there with a stupid look on my face because nobody told me I had to get out. They mentioned it to her. And I'm like, what's going on? And then, of course, everybody knows in South Carolina the rattlesnakes are ridiculous. There's no reason for their existence. And they had gotten the rattlesnake tails. And so then after she shook the crap out of the bushes, nine feet up in the air, we hear all of these rattles from rattlesnakes being rattled. So unless there was like this stockpile hanging upside down nine feet up in the air, it was from them. So, yeah, it, it was bizarre. <laughs> well, when they tell you to get out, you get out. Oh, they mean it. They, yeah, they mean it. So anyway, I'm... <laughs> no, I mean, That's just my segue. I'm going to leave. Okay. Thank you, ladies, for yes, being thank you for being part of it. Thank you all. I'm James Lady. Uh, my, if you want to follow, it's all free on YouTube. Don't even, you know, uh, monetize my videos. Uh, working on a documentary. Look out for that. I may or may not monetize. I don't care. It's a hobby. It's a great hobby. Something to annoy my wife and daughters. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's a really wonderful way to feel like a kid when once again. If you're into adventure, you know. I've had multiple encounters, never been harmed. Uh, they are people. Be respectful. And I do want to add on to what you just said about the people part. And Janice and I talk about this frequently. We also talk to Igor about this frequently. They truly are people. Um, you know, people can, whatever beliefs, I respect everybody for their own beliefs. I don't try to force a belief on anybody. But they truly are people. One of the things that James had said was about this great group of people that we work with. And I think that the reason it works is we're like-minded. Number one, had it not been for Bob Daigle, I would not be here. Bob was the first person I ever contacted about the Bigfoot activity that had been going on my entire life. Bob introduced me to Igor. Without Igor or stuff, again, I wouldn't be here because I would have stayed out in the woods with my groups for the rest of my life and, and not said a word to anybody. And so thank you, Bob and Igor, because without you two, I wouldn't be here. And then, of course, they introduced me to Janice, and she's just like a sister to me. So... You know, that just gets even better. But we are in that mindset where maybe not everybody is at that point where they can accept it because it's a lot to take. Okay, Janice and I talk about this all the time. The stuff that we've seen, the rabbit hole we've gone down, most people would just have themselves institutionalized. Okay? Uh, yeah, uh, exactly. Honest. Exactly. My, my fiance almost left me. <laughs> she did. She's now, she's I mean, my wife, but, uh, yeah, and so it, it goes deep, and there's not a bottom. It is the bottomless pit, yeah. you know. And, and Janice and I tell everybody, "How deep do you want to go?" Because trust me, yeah. we can go there. But we are like-minded in the fact that these are truly a people in every sense of the word. They may not be in the culture sense that we are all in and how we live our lives. Our words mean different to them. Theirs mean different to us. 
their way of life is different than us, it doesn't take away from the fact that they truly are a people. So when Dr. Ketchum came out, who's now, I met her through the study, and she's now one of my dearest friends, um, when she, so I, as well as Janice, had a very inside track on it. A lot of it was not brought out into the public eye. But um, it proved exactly what we already knew. Yeah. And, I didn't have to ask them. No, and I had asked them years before. But speaking of mom, Bob and I met first, Bob and I met the first time at Eric's conference. Yes, back 2003. And um, he had a friend that did a partial study on some hair that I had collected from Fox. And it came back human, basically. Uh, and that wasn't DNA, but you know, as far yeah. as I could tell, at that, that time. At that time, I mean, this was in its infancy, and this was in the infancy of our studies because nobody had ever asked me for hair except for Henner, and I sent him so much hair, he said, oh, no, don't send me any more, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And I didn't know that much about DNA or anything. I thought, okay, okay, they want a hair sample, here we go. I'll get it all day long if that's what they want. But I think that Tom said it was possible contaminated human. Am I, am I correct? Are we talking about Tom Pachitko? Yes, yes. Uh, well, they, they, all, they always want to say about the contamination. Uh, if, he, he certainly didn't, but whoever you know, wasn't discussing Right, but you read, you read that, the test study, the analysis, because I, I, I didn't understand well, the I didn't understand a whole lot of it either, but, uh, except I was very impressed that all the proper procedures were followed. And they, I guess they took video of how they handled it from step to step. Step to step, and that was in 2003. Yeah. What is the difficult? The difficulty is that their DNA is human DNA. Yes. Yeah. And when they uh, they make analysis, they, if they found human DNA, they say, oh, this is contamination, as you, yeah. you mentioned this also. Yes. But uh, it is uh, really human DNA. Uh, to distinguish that it is necessary to make very deep analysis. It costs much money. For example, a uh, uh, society of Max Planck in Germany for first uh, Homo altaiensis or Homo denisovan, uh, it cost $500,000 their analysis, you see. Now maybe it's uh, more cheap. But anyway, it is uh, much expensive. That is why nobody of scientists uh, do such uh, analysis, such deep analysis, to distinguish the DNA. They are very, very close to the human DNA. This is a problem why they could not uh, recognize them. You see, it is a, a, one of the problems. Ladies, thank you. People, thank please you. be thank with you. you. Thank you, James. Thank you. Talk. <laughs> While I go through and try to manipulate things, never change. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know which one this is. Let me see where. I'm Janice right. and I did conferences together for two years, and we had decided early on that rather than talk individually, we would just tag team everything because we just had a whole lot more fun that way. I had a lot of recordings. Hold on, I got to go through some of them. And they, they, <laughs> while you're doing that. The handprint that Igor is talking about, let me touch briefly on that since he had brought it up while she's looking for that. Um, my husband and I had just moved to a home in South Carolina. I'm born and raised in Michigan. I've had encounters everywhere I've ever been. It, it doesn't matter where I go. And he had gone to work for the day. I was home by myself. I'd been in the bedroom. I'd cleaned the whole bedroom from top to bottom. And he had a black Star Wars pillow. It has Chewbacca on the back of it. Okay, Chewbacca was created because George Lucas had an encounter when he was nine years old. That's where Chewbacca came from. On the back of that pillow was just solid black. And he had turned it black side out, just the way he happened to set it down. It was sitting on a chair next to the bed. And I had already been in there and cleaned. I came out of the bedroom and I found white powder on the floor. And it had the consistency of powdered sugar. And fingerprints ran through it. Now I'm the only one that was there. And I'm used to this, so this doesn't phase me. And I'm like, okay, guys, I don't care that you get into things, but I don't, have, I don't need to clean up any more stuff than what I'm doing. So I go to get a dustpan. I come back, and it's gone except for pieces, little crumbles. So it was already been taken care of. 
I never went back into this bedroom. I went about my business the rest of the day. My husband comes home, he walks into the bedroom, and he comes out, he says, so what's with the giant handprint? I said, what handprint are you talking about? We go in there, and again, I have the picture at the, at the table. Um, there's this gigantic handprint on this pillow. I it, can show this. Oh, here. please do. Yeah, go right ahead, honey. Um, and so three months later, Igor gets there. Sure. Well, I you didn't Why was putting your hand on a pillow make a handprint? Was it a, a depression? No, it was actually they had the white powder on the handprint. Thank you, Bob. On the handprint, so on the pillow was a white handprint, and the the arch that went from here. There's no way it could have been one of our humans. It could be one of their humans, but it couldn't have been one of ours. And so, Igor, when he's in the States, generally comes and stays two or three months at my home. Unfortunately, this time he couldn't because I have so many family members, I have to stack them up like laws right now that are staying with me. And he was there at the time, and this is three months later. We couldn't get the handprint off the pillow. It was still there. So when he got there, Pat could not wait. Is this Kingston? Or anyway, he could not wait to show this, Igor this handprint. Find this Kingston. And it, it's been quite the the controversial handprint, and it's been all over the place now. Yeah. It took over two years for that handprint to go away, and yeah, you can because they have natural oil. Yeah, the, the oil and the texture in your skin oh. is different. If you ever it's right, do you, like get inside of your being? Yeah, you I was just gonna say you cannot know. get rid of it. I had all the windex in the world. <laughs> no, I had my King car. Stars. Find Kingston. Yes, and here is we don't know. And I'm gonna be very honest with you. 19, when I say 19. I don't know, oh, 18, because I found before. out with yeah. other people as well yeah, as this myself, one. but I'm, I'm sure with Janice and as well. We tend to find this white okay. powder. I have tried Thank my darkness to figure out what they're using for this powder and I've not been able to find out unless I can, you know, somehow get money together and do testing on it. I don't know that we'll ever know, but I have found that in various states and various places that I've gone and talked to people, they notice the same thing. I also have a picture that I brought with me um, of a tree drawing and on this tree drawing it's made with that Let's same see. power powder. You make the big them, big pictures. You know, can you make answer, big pictures? Okay, uh, yeah, and I've never, you, honestly, I've never done it. You big pictures. Yeah, it was just a matter of, we just laughed. You have to understand, in my situation oh, yeah. as well as with yeah. this, this, this is, happens this on a is daily, yeah, yeah, yeah. minute by Thank minute you. basis, and you just get to the point where, okay, there's the handprint. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, this arch through here is just tremendous. It's not that it was one of the, the younger kids. I mean, when we asked them, I, you know, my husband is telepathic as well. And when we asked them, it, they said it was one of the kids playing around. So it's a big handprint for us. It's not overly big for them. But you do have that wide angle that goes through there. You know, but they did a tree drawing as well. They did a teddy bear, and then they did one that had um, a Bigfoot, and then ET heads floating all around. <laughs> it, was, it was quite elaborate. And it was in the same powder. And then right after this happened, three weeks later, we've had another handprint in our bathroom. My husband had taken off Somebody his pants for work. Help me. <laughs> Are you trying to go forward? Help me, please. Uh, and go next they one, had next left one. another handprint. It only was a smaller child's handprint on it. And then when Igor oh, got there, in my, I have a yes, master suite in, in this bathroom that I have, there is a oh, frosted glass one. above the tub. And that's eight and a half feet off the ground. It's my hand. Oh, okay. And we were outside yes. one day, Igor Janice and I walking around, and I looked up, and here's these handprints on the frosted glass. And so apparently they're looking into the tub through the frosted glass, but they can't see anything. I don't want to frighten them. So look, look, <laughs> I, mean, look, I can't afford therapy for them. <laughs> look what was on the face uh, side of the pillow. Oh, yeah. This is the Star Wars. Oh, that's my husband. This is his. Oh. Yeah. See, there's Chewbacca on the, on the other <laughs> side. So on the face side of the pillow was Chewbacca. That means they understand what, what yeah, they, they know catch. What <laughs> yeah, they. Uh, okay. We we do a lot of looking in the windows, and it, they're very well behaved, though. So you said like How do she? Do they experience all this stuff too? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, my son-in-law um, is staying with me right now for a little while, and he already knew I was legitimate. He already knew all this stuff was going on, but he pulled in the driveway and one stepped out of the bushes and kind of stopped and looked at him and kind of went like this. And he came in and he said, "Okay, mom, I believe you all these years, and now I'm looking at it."
you know, and then he spent six days out in my yard with the night vision glasses going, look at them, they're running all over the backyard. I'm like, take down the night vision glasses, you'll still see them running all over the backyard. And then the following week it was, there's an ET across from the driveway. He's like a whitish gray color, he's popping up and down behind the bushes. And I said, yeah. So I go out there and he's like, no, no, don't go near it. I said, he's been here before, he's good, you know. So I walked out there and he goes to look up in the air and there's six UFOs around the house. Um, I don't do a lot of recording. Like, I do have a lot of pictures. I will say that, and Janice has seen them. I don't run around out there taking pictures all the time. I, I don't need to. Um, I'm happy to share what I've learned and what I know with everybody, but I don't feel that I have to, to prove it to anybody. People that don't want to believe oh, yes, me, I'm fine King with Stone. that. Because when they say, you know, we think you're making it up or whatever, that's fine because I'm going to go home and play with my big friends. So yeah. you go ahead and think what you want. Yeah. And I think Janice, yeah. I can yeah. very yeah. safely yeah. say King it's the same way with it. Oh, yes. um, we don't try to King prove Stone. it anymore. We try to educate. Yes, and we and both 19, had not done conferences 19. for a very long time. And the only reason we started again was because they asked us to. They want the to game? be accepted yeah. as people. They don't want to be declared monsters because they're not. Okay. Um, it's important to know that there's good and bad. We have rapists, murderers, pedophiles. I would rather play with the Bigfoot than regular humans. This was another Oh, yeah, that was in my, in my bathroom, more hand -fast. Another year. Yeah, that was uh, the year after. 19. And so, but they have the same thing. You know, it's not any different. Another problem that they have is because people misidentify what they are doing. I, I work with people all over the place, as does Jan. And we constantly are told, we were attacked or we had this horrible encounter and we say, did they hurt you? Oh no, what did they do? <laughs> yeah, and other than they got scared because of what they looked like, they didn't do anything. I had one woman say to me, I'm terrified because it was waving its arms at me and I said, okay, but like if you're at war and you're in the military and you do that, it's surrender. So how do you think that's hurting? They're, they're not trying to do that. Justin Smyth just shot one in cold blood because it was up waving its arms at him. You know, and he'll have to answer to his karma and everybody else for that. But the thing is, you know, they say, oh, it threw a rock at me. And the first thing you say is, what size? Because if you're talking about a pebble like that, they're just letting you know they're there. Are you talking about a boulder? And then they're trying to tell you, I'm not hitting you, but now get out of here because you're too close to my family. You're too close to my kids. I'm hunting. I'm doing this or whatever. Get out. You know, listen to the the clues. I mean, they will give you. Yeah. <laughs> my daughter, my yeah. youngest. Because and I you will be harassed later. <laughs> we will harass her later. Uh, yes. You can go in the bushes with me. Walk up. <laughs> okay. Did you find yours? Uh, yes. I found this one. Um, okay. First off, I don't know whether we have established that they have a language, but they do have their own language. Yep. They do speak in English, at least the ones here in the United States do. The first time that I went down to Robbins, Bo shows up, Winnie Bojo is his name. Um, he is Fox's daughter's husband. Um, her name is Nikki, Nick, I can't say it right. Nikki for short. Nikki for short. <laughs> I can't say it correctly. We asked Bo for a recipe because Robin has fibromyalgia. It's excruciating. Oh, yeah. Bo gave it, but we had to barter with him to get this recipe. It is, uh, and it does of, work. Uh, okay. The recipe yeah. does work. It's a tea. So we like told it. him that we would give him Janice some Kit Kat candy bar. Yes, <laughs> I go awesome. home and I had a vendor's tent at the time, Holly can tell you, because I do a lot of dog shows. I am a professional dog show handler for AKC. I train you to train your dogs. That's what I do. That's what I love to do. That said, I had one of my vendor's tents, I had it set up air now because we've been down to Brooksville, Cal in, down in um, Florida and had been encountered with some tropical storms at that point. I come home, I put the Kit Kats on a table inside of the tent and I told Bo, I said, come get your Kit Kat Kats, here's the payment for the recipe. He sent Nikki. This is what happened because she didn't take them to Bo. She ate them. <laughs> when you're done, you need to tell them about our shopping spree they sent us oh my God. on lavender. <laughs> Do this first, though. Okay. 
Shall we not, not repeat that uh, phone says? He's upset. No, no. no. So he okay. says his okay. name well and no. her name. And he says, I'll, I'll reply. I don't know. Where's my mic? Here, you manipulate it. Me? Uh, my yeah. mic's not very strong. Okay. You have to do it inside. Can you hear that at all, you guys? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's really low. I'm sorry. I'm They're sorry. This is, not, this is not. What it he is? He says. What he says is Nikki has promised, and he's no speak to her again. I I don't speak to him <laughs> because he is upset with her because she promised to take him his candy bar I and mean, she didn't. Obviously. <laughs> um, let me back here. It's impossible to be able to do the pronunciation that they do. But they're saying in English, somebody go get people. And still, is that a little bit better? Can you hear that better? Good. That gurgle. Oh it's very guttural. I mean, it comes down. You know, we speak from up here, and that's not necessarily. They have a wide range in pitch, but there's comes. It's more guttural and garbled. And believe it or not, this is actually female talking the same. There is a softer tone to the females a lot of times and a higher pitch to the females than the males. Um, I, don't, oh, um, I don't know how many of you have listened to the Sierra Sounds by Ron Moorhead. Is anybody? They're fabulous. I would recommend it to everybody if you really want to hear a good vocal, a clear vocal. I think other than Igor's, because Igor's, if anybody was able to hear Igor's today, excellent, excellent, um, and they were quite clear. Ron's, I think, is probably as clear as it gets. They're just phenomenal. Could Janice, could you, I think I saw you do it on Google. Could oh. you interpret what they were fighting over at the Sierra Sound? He, she did a beautiful yes. job of that. Yes. She did a beautiful job of that. Yes. Okay. Um, on the Sierra Sounds, they are trying to communicate with Al Barry, Ron Moorhead, um, um, oh. no, no, Don wasn't, wasn't in there. there. Okay, it was Al Barry, Ron, um, uh, Bill, and I can't think. I can't remember. Was it Wayne? Was it, uh, no. no. What was that? Wayne. Anyway, they're trying to communicate with the men, and they, uh, Bill and Ron, ride up into camp. And they immediately start because they have been out on a hunting trip. Now, the Bigfoot are the ones that told me the story. A lot of this was never published before he actually published Into the Wilderness. It was just the recordings. I finally managed to reach Ron in 2007 on a podcast that Robert Morgan, who actually could not stand me, he thought it was a big hoax, but that's neither here nor there. We do not care. <laughs> he doesn't matter. It, I used his podcast, live podcast, to call Ron, and I said, Ron, they are talking to you. The female, she wants some, they both want some of the bear meat that the, the guys had brought in to camp. They killed a bear. They also killed a deer later on, but that's neither here nor there. And she's saying, I want some of that. And he doesn't know our words for bear meat. So he's clicking the rocks together. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna what? Because he doesn't know our word for bear meat. 
Okay, they, they use their own language to communicate with each other. So it progresses. And she sings songs out, and Ron tries to mimic her, which, as she sings songs this out, so trying to get him to understand, I want some of that. And he goes, I want some of that. You know, and I don't do a good show of mimicking them, but that's, they're not mimicking us. I'm mimicking them, okay? And this progresses. So, Nasari, the male, comes down, he's the older male, and they all have names, comes down into camp. Waha picks up a Wapahama, and I found out after, many, many years after, that a Wapahama is Wapahampa is a seashell that they used, the Native Americans used to use in trade that comes from the East Coast. It is not native to the West Coast. <laughs> they used it like money, like we do today's currency. That said, she finds one. Lord knows where she found it, but she found it. And she's telling him it's hers. And they get in this argument. The coffee pot spills over hot water onto Nasari's foot. He starts screaming, but she is telling him, no, mine, back off, you know. <laughs> and he's saying, no, you give it to me because he's the leader of the, the family, you know. And she's not having any of that. She is screaming her head off at him, arguing with him. And she goes over, finally she wins this battle. She goes over to the son, Nicormit is his name. She says, Nicormit, look at here, uh-huh, get up. This is what, you know. She says, I got a Wapama. That's all you should not have. <laughs> you know, it, they tell the entire story. Yeah, it's she, an album. She goes up, she's banging the toilet seat lid. Bang, 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 bang. She's found an opera. Okay, this is not a Wapama, this is an opera. Okay, she goes up there and she gets this and she's banging this toilet seat lid and the sorry hollers at her because she's obviously ripped it off. Now, Ron never told this anywhere, any place. How would this crazy country bumpkin from Tennessee know this information? Nasari tells her, Wah, put it back. She took off with that toilet lid, but she did take it back. Can you say something with lavender? Oh, sure, yeah. You want to do it? No, you go. Go for it. Okay. So... I'm basically a puppet for the benefit. <laughs> they tell me things that they want done, and I do it, okay? And they had some work that they wanted me to do for them over in the Cumberland Mountains. So they're, at that point, it was to keep me safe, and Janice was supposed to help keep me safe. <laughs> so we're at home, and they use various things for protection, lavender being one of them. So now they decide that because there's going to be these terrible things coming to get me so that I can't do what they want me to do, to keep me safe, I have to be covered in lavender. And when they say covered in lavender, that means there's not one pore in your body that's not covered in lavender. So, as I said before, Janice and I, and we're in the woo room, so it's safe to talk about it. Janice and I are very fluent in telepathy. So, they're talking to us, and they're like, we need lavender. She has to be covered in lavender. So, Janice and I go to the nearest store, which is a Walmart. You have not lived until you've shopped with a Bigfoot in your head, going around telling you what to get. I had to have... It had to be pure lavender deodorant. It couldn't be just lavender scented. It had to be a, a, a natural lavender deodorant. And they were going through this entire list and sending Janice and I all over, and they wanted a lavender bubble bath, because I take a bubble bath every night. And I couldn't find it. And I looked and I looked, and I'm like, guys, I can't. And I knew which one. We have a, a large male named Brownie. That's not his real name, but it's just a friend of mine named him that pet years name. ago. Pet? pet name. Yeah, that's his pet name. And so we, it just stuck. You know, and they have a just bizarre sense of humor, so I'm always telling him he's brownie to clowny. And he's wonderful. He saved my life four times. He's one of my, I consider him my dearest friend. And so I'm telling him, I can't find this. I'm perfectly fine. Like, I'm not defenseless. I can take care of myself, and Janice is there, and we got this covered. No, 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 you have to have it. I went all over that store. I couldn't find it. And he said, go back, go back. And I said, go back where? And he said, where you just walked. I said, but there's none there. I go back there, and here's this giant bottle of lavender bubble lab. So in the meantime, they're sending her to the baby department for the baby lavender. We spent two hours in there, and you don't even want to know how much money we spent on lavender. Anything lavender. It had to be lavender shampoo. It couldn't be scented. It had to be out of real lavender. 
It had to be shampoo. It had to be the body wash. It had to be the deal. It was ridiculous. Nobody should ever smell of lavender to the level that I did. And they kept me like that for, what, a month? Because yeah, yeah. it was a month before I did the job. Right. Yeah. So it was insane. But you have not shopped until they're in your head. I mean, it was just crazy. After I want to... Please. Uh, uh, no, so what, what you no, you're fine. You can say something. We can all talk. We do this as a group a lot, you guys. So, a oh, sure. What were they trying to protect you from? That they thought? Because they had work that they wanted me to do, and what they okay. First off, she okay. First off, she was come to Tennessee, and I, I don't know whether he's in the room tonight or not. Um, I am often snuck into a lot of these gatherings with different groups that people may hate me in the group. But the BFRO snuck me into one of their meetings um, back a while back. And I had told people, okay, there the certain groups in this forest, and it doesn't matter. This is Standing Stone National Forest. It's public, you know, public parklands. And they live, there's several family groups, actually a tribe that lives in this Standing Stone Re National Reserve area. That that's, that said, that said, there had been a par, a portion of this land that has been sold off to develop a subdivision, and Robin had to go and we had to basically calm them down, bless the land. I had to clear the land. I had to open portals. I had to open vortexes because there was government bombs that had been dropped in certain sections that had killed some of their people. So it was open a vortex here, clear this land, put energy walls here. It was just and a they were going to kidnap her. Yeah, and if they I was, were going to yeah, the big ones, I was told that if I did not go on my own, they would come and take me, which I can't, with my fiber, they can't carry me around like they think they can. And so it was a matter of, I, you know, so I'll be there, and they were fine with that. But there were other things out in the woods that would not want me to do the work that was supposed to be good for them. So they kept telling me the others you know, could come and hurt me. And I have had that happen before. I've had things that have shown up and actually tried to stop me from doing the work that they wanted me yeah, to do. Yeah, followed by unmarked oh, The government is, yeah, but I mean, place. even like other cryptids, ETs, whatever, and that's more what they were fearful of. Janice and I have both had to deal with the government as far as death threats. Um, I've had a phone tap since 2009. We've had um, followed, you know, the men in black. I've had my bank accounts frozen, those various things like that. They weren't so much concerned about that because that's dealt with in our world, and we're kind of stuck having to figure that out on our own. But it, it's more of the paranormal things that will come after me to stop me from doing what they need me to do. So that's what the lavender was supposedly supposed to protect me from. I don't get really worked up about it. I, they have guards all around my house. I, I mean, the foots do. I have dogmen that are guards. I have one that, in fact, Jack's got a picture of him. His name is Luicious. He, he's such a, a dogman that sits across. Um, yeah, I have a picture of Revive too, and Gitz. Yeah, across my driveway. So I, I'm pretty well protected. I mean, right. there's occasionally been a few things that have gotten through, and I'm like, okay, where is everybody? You know, and I deal with it on my own. But um, yeah, that's what the the big deal was, and I didn't have any ever issues. I mean, we got the, I got it done. <laughs> no. Okay. That said, I have always, and I, you all do matter. I do try to educate people. I want to have a good coexistence, good encounters. And not every encounter is going to be good. Some of them are going to be post-traumatic stress syndrome. You're going to get it, okay? Because that can be darn right scary. Igor has experienced that too with death, okay? <laughs> yes, you had a first-hand experience with and the other. But anyway, that being said, they are a people. That's what I preach. That's what I'm trying to teach you. Yep. They are a people. We are infringing upon their in their homes, their environment. And their worlds. Their and lives. their worlds. There is bound. It may not be in my lifetime, but in my daughter's lifetime, it may be a time that we have to learn to coexist with them. And we need to be doing that now. Yeah, we really do. And it's all based on respect. They live their lives under the law of raw, which is the law of one, where everybody works as a collective for the benefit of everybody. 
But we could take a lesson from that. Yeah, basically 19 and a half years ago, I wrote to Dmitry Banoff because Igor had gone out and had collected and done a lot of work and they told the story of Zana. And I said, if I don't prove anything that I say to anybody else, I have accomplished it. I told you there were people. I told you they had a language. Give me yes, <laughs> before I start crying. You see, uh, today uh, we, uh, somebody of you uh, heard uh, that uh, women squatching like so, yes? And, uh, oh, she squatters. Came with she squatters. She squatters, yeah. Uh, and the idea came to my uh, head that uh, we um, have to be very appreciate to your women to study this subject. You see, uh, uh, starting with Jane Goodall, she studied animals uh, in Africa, uh, uh, these uh, chimpanzees. She was a pioneer of studying the uh, behavior of uh, chimpanzees. But I want to say that Janice Carter is a pioneer of studying a big food since 1972 when she first met folks that uh, big food folks and for 30 years 30 years of their, her life between them with the family uh, between among that family of big food there in Tennessee on the farm of her uh, grandfather uh, uh, she was studying this she was first who said that they can speak. We could not believe it before about it. But after when I went to her uh, property, it was in 2004, I was convinced that this, she is right. And after that, Scott Nelson, military uh, cryptolinguist, confirmed that these uh, people, forest people, they can speak uh, human languages, yes. And we received the confirmation of that. And after that, the next, uh, what is Robert, <laughs> Robert. <laughs> uh, I was late next, to the party. Uh, generation. <laughs> I never <laughs> knew they couldn't no, speak. No, they are in the same uh, <laughs> uh, ages. But uh, Robin was the next. Uh, she developed this study. Um, uh, but, um, yeah. went I, more and more and more deep. I never the, knew that not everybody uh, knew after, they could speak. Uh, <laughs> some some uh, uh, haughty uh, scientists say, what could do this uh, housewives? They are lying there uh, saying some fairy tales, etc. But not. This, <laughs> even such a woman, they first uh, opened the eyes, our eyes, and they start to understand what are these people. Now I can say other uh, women like, for example, River McManus uh, in uh, Kentucky continues this work. In uh, United Kingdom, I know uh, several uh, women who studied this. Uh, Deborah Hatswell, for example, there was some other names. I don't remember all the names. It is difficult for me to pronounce there. Yes, uh, uh, this is they, they, they and this is uh, why I, I thought about it. Because these women, they uh, have developed intuition uh, in the contrary to the men. The men uh, are uh, using logic, but this logic does not Feel does not give much uh, results because they say, "Oh, prove me, give me blood, give me body, give me uh, their uh, pictures, etc." But nobody can do this, and why we don't we we could discuss uh, separately. But the women they feel they uh, study this subject with soul, with their soul, with their heart. That is why they achieve more results in communicating with these forest people. And we uh, uh, do 
thanks to such women who study this subject, we are going ahead, ahead, ahead in this subject. And we communicate. Well, now, I also follow such intuition. I say, we no, don't need any confirmation. We just continue to communicate with these forest people and we, uh, our aim is to uh, contact them, to communicate. And after this, when, when I return, return back to Moscow, I will go to expedition to our uh, places where we met before with this. And they are waiting, they are uh, inviting me personally. They say, you come and bring somebody from behind the ocean, from <laughs> behind the, waters, the ocean, the because they like uh, people here, because here is a little another uh, situation. That means we shall continue to get uh, communication with them. And we yeah. start to, uh, to uh, uh, approach to them, not as an anthropological uh, subject, but uh, of, of not uh, physical anthropology, but cultural anthropology, ethnology, uh, how they, like they are tribes, they are tribes which are hidden, which are secret tribes, but we should uh, approach to them as to the people, to the special uh, hidden tribes, tribe like so, maybe race, hidden race, yes, of the humans. In this case, we shall achieve the results in, uh, and we shall uh, continue to develop the relations with them and uh, finally they will be recognized. Uh, that is uh, my uh, work. I, I, uh, I appreciate you very much that you studied this and you are pioneers in this study. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lord. We love you. Um, I, I do want to say one thing. Janice was a woman on a, on a mission. Okay, she knew she was going to prove this to the world. I, on the other hand, was like living under a rock. I had been with these, as Janice had since I was a toddler. I never knew that not everybody mind spoke. I had no clue that not everybody knew they could talk. I, when I was three and four years old, I had no idea people didn't realize they were people, and I didn't know anybody in this field. So I spent a large portion of my life just being taught things by them and working with them and having them around them, okay? I had the dogmen, I had my first ET abduction, I was four. Um, I had all of these things going on, but I was by myself, I didn't have anybody. My, my world on this platform was very small, where Janice was much bigger, she knew people. And so she was a woman on a mission, she knew what she wanted to prove. Myself, I had no idea that not everybody thought these things. So when I met Bob, and then Bob introduced me to Igor, and, he, and I never thought in my wildest of imagination that there would be anybody in the free world that want, wanted to ever hear anything I had to say about any of this. And I was very blessed because my parents never said, you're crazy, we don't believe you. They said, this isn't anything we know about, but we're not gonna, you, you've never been a liar, so we're just gonna have to say that we don't know anything about it and leave it at that. I mean, at age four, I was telling my parents about stick structures and ETs and Bigfoots and dogmen and all these other things. And, and there wasn't even anything out yet about it. So when I met everybody, and Igor said, no, people are going to want to hear. And then it became my mission as well. So we, we had the same goals. We had the same ideas. But it was just done in different ways because of exposure. Like, I was perfectly happy running around. I would go outside when I was, you know, three or four years old, and they would be in the tree line, and they'd watch me play, and they, they mind spoke, and I, I never knew it wasn't a big deal. I didn't find out until later on when somebody was telling me about mind speak, and they said, oh, wait till you learn how to mind speak with them, and I thought, oh my God, I so want to do that. I've learned all these other things. I want to learn how to mind speak, and we're out in the woods one day, and they and said, once again, I was the first one that because of their words, it does translate, telepathy translates it, into my speak. It does. Word. And so I was out in the woods with somebody, and the Bigfoots had said, you know, tell him this. So I told him that, and he said, how did you know that? And I said, well, they told me to tell you that. He says, you can mind speak? I said, that's mind speak? I've been doing that since I was running around in diapers. Like, nobody told me that's what it was called. I just thought every, I didn't know everybody didn't do it because there was never any part of my world that it never happened. So I just never knew it, 
you know, and, and so it, we had very similar situations and we ended up in the same point and thankfully together, but it was just, it was very weird for me because I just didn't have anybody in that arena that said, you know, people need to know this. People want to hear it. I just, yeah, and to begin with, Igor and Dimitri tried to keep us separate. They wanted to interrogate us <laughs> because it was interrogation. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I forgot to mention uh, one uh, woman, uh, she was uh, Jan, Jana Kaufman. She was uh, born in France but lived all her life in Russia. And I was uh, in her expedition at first in 1965 when I started this work. I visited her expedition and just 11th of July she passed away in the ages of 102 years old. She was in France, in Paris, and, and all her life she was studying this subject, uh, Jana Kaufman. Also, sorry that I did not mention her when I was speaking about the women and the role of the women inside the... She studied in 1958 in expedition to Pamir Mountains, and after she was a leader of the Caucasian expedition, which I visited, and since that I started my my uh, work in this field. Sorry, uh, she just uh, several days ago passed away. Yes. I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. I'm having a carousel moment. Okay. <laughs> we should. Yeah. yeah. In, I, I do want to say one more thing, though. It, you know, the women may be moving some ground in here. Oh, the interrogation. Okay. So, but without this man who's dedicated his entire life, us women wouldn't be here. Okay? So for all the praise that he gives us, this is the fearless leader that gets us there. And trust me, we march to his beat. <laughs> A lot of times, even when we get mad even at when, each other. Yeah, even when we threaten to cause bodily harm. Um, but yeah, we, we may be powerhouses and we may try to be proven to the world everything. And God knows the Bigfoot push us out there every chance they get to promote them and what they want said. For everything that we put out for everybody to be educated from that they want us to, there, you have to understand that there is so much more that we're, they are asking us not to bring forth. So we have to go between them and kind of determine what needs to come out, what people are ready to hear, whether they're in, sometimes they want it out, whether people are ready or not. But if it wasn't for this guy, we wouldn't be getting it out because he's the ringleader. He's the one that gets us there. I communicated you. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, yeah. yeah. He spent years when he finally wanted us to get together. Janice, together. And, yeah, Janice and I were never in the same place at the same time. So he comes to my house in South Carolina, and he calls Jan, and he says, can you run me to Robin's house? And she said, yeah, I'll do it. It's only a five, six hour drive, and like 17 and a half hours later, after they got lost until the middle of the night, I was almost abducted by a giant UFO over my house, but they finally showed up, okay? And her and I have been thick as thieves and joined at the hip, and by day three, he was like, I don't get to talk to you. All you do is talk to each other. I'm sorry I, I introduced you to him. So we drove him crazy, I think, the first week. Okay, let's okay, go to here, dinner. Yeah. She had something the to say. People want to <laughs> have dinner. But, but what uh, I was going to say. It is time to have Dimitri and <laughs> Igor kept us separated. We were, were not allowed to no, correspond right allowed. to begin with because they no. wanted to make sure that we could back up each other's independent studies. Yeah. And we were both so saying we weren't feeding off each thing. other. We weren't but we got feeding the same off thing. each other. I didn't know who the heck she was. She had no clue no, who I was. You know. Shall we finish? Shall we finish now? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We're going to take our dinner break now. Um, Janice and I were going to do this together, but uh, then. Oh yes. Yeah. Maybe one or two copies of Janice's book, Fifty Years with Bigfoot, back at Janice's table, yeah. in case anyone's interested. Yeah. Um, and hopefully we'll get her to reprint some more. Um, I was supposed to speak today at 3.50, and then Janice and I decided to tag team it, and then she was supposed to be speak tonight, but Chad was going to speak. Chad has asked me to speak with him on a lot of activity in New Wago County in Michigan. So we will be over there. Uh, what time was it you were supposed to do it? 6.50, I think. 6.50. So um, Chad yeah. and I will be there at 6.50 tonight over 6. on the other side 6. for anybody that, that is interested. 
Or 640? 640. Okay. Yeah, 640. Okay. So we will see everybody then. Thank you so much. Thank you.